all right well we got it all cleaned up there's still some minor things there but nothing that's going to catch or or worry me i'm gonna got my bearings in the freezer the uh axles look relatively clean kind of hard to see in there but you can kind of see yeah. anyway back here that's as clean as that's gonna get I'll wipe it out one more time. Just get that loose stuff off. This guy is same old, same old. Axle housing's really relatively clean. Hard to see. And then I also hit the edges. Got them all cleaned up. All right, got our new axles out. Compared them, make sure they're the right lengths. Counted the splines. Did all that silliness. The axles came with this cool stuff. They actually came with a bearing and a seal, studs and lug nuts. So, um, there's that. That's pretty cool. I'm trying to decide whether I want to put the studs in before I install the axle or not. Um, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to do the put the bearings and the seals in first no matter what. So, that's my next step, bearings and seals. Alright, I'm putting these studs in. Just gonna use the electric impact. Uh, put some washers in there to absorb some motion, some rotational force. And getting kind of warm. I'll switch sockets. washer on it each time so it won't you know mush it down or whatever don't put your beer up here because it'll spill ask me how I know That one's okay. This is okay. I'm gonna go grab some more. All right, guys. So what I did is I took this bearing, found a socket, having to be a 38 millimeter, that fit like right on it. I mean, this guy goes just a little bit of slack in there. Downsizes it so I can hit it with a hammer. I already did the other side, but we'll show you how this works. Now, I'm fixing to lube the inside with this engine assembly grease. Really good stuff. I call it raspberry jelly. I don't know if it tastes like raspberry, but it sure looks good. And this stuff is super slippery. And I haven't got my... You see how it's just gooey it is, yeah. I haven't got my bearing yet, but I'm going to run and do that, and I'll be right back. Alright, got my frozen bearing. You can see it's already trying to frost over. <clears throat> Set that guy in there. Try and get it as straight as possible. moves everybody's happy yes 13 yes three ball we'll do repeat the same process with the seals one moment now I didn't put the seal in the freezer because it's thin metal so it's gonna flex a little more and I don't think there's a need to get a little bit bigger deal this has got sealer on it so it'll keep it from from leaking but since we nicked that I'm gonna go ahead yeah I'm gonna go ahead and go with it um, if it ends up leaking I'll pull it out and replace it but I don't think it's gonna leak. Oh try and get as straight as you can on these guys. You can tap it in if you want but get nice and straight. You can hear it. And it's flush. Let's go in a little bit more I think.
makes a different sound when you come up against it. Hear it? It's a solid, solid seal. So, yep. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and since I got that raspberry stuff all over my fingers, which is why I'm about dropping everything I touch, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this because when you insert that, I want there to have be some lube on it initially, you know, the axle. So, there you go. Do that. This is the long side axle, also known as the left hand side, as you're sitting in the car. up a little bit to get that to work for me. Alrighty, so <clears throat> when you put the bear, these guys back in, you got to make sure that the, all the holes align so when you put your pin in, it works. It clears everything. The pin has a hole in it right here. That needs to line up with that, but it's pretty easy to do. Um, these new axles are super tight tolerance, so I'm just going to tap this guy in like so. And see if that puts me in my hole or maybe a little bit too far. I don't know. Okay, so that'll give me a line to where I need to be. Yep, now I'm going to clean this, put some Loctite on it, and insert it. So, and remember we said that was a, uh, that was an 8 millimeter. I meant to say it was a 6 millimeter. <laughs> or a 5 sixteenths. Yellow lock, lock tight on. I'm going to use blue. Uh huh. Um, as you can see, nice blue. Let's see if we can't get that in there. Pretty sure that's about oh, 5 sixteenths. I grabbed being bad. Ratcheting wrenches, yay! All right, give it a good torquing. Okay. All right. Where the torque will put this guy down. Put this in here. It's not that much torque, but it was wanting to move on me, so. Tied it in, torque now. Happy days are here again. Now we're gonna button up the back end and and uh, let her sit overnight. All right, got the gooey stuff on. Kind of messy, but I put it. It's easier to put it on this one also. Not sure if you can see that, but uh, anyway, got it all the way around this guy. So we're gonna stick it on there, and it should be good. And did a did a poor job of cleaning my bolts up, but Sure. It's all uniformly snug. 
do it. And last but not least, I'm going to take my light and go all the way around this guy, make sure I got a bead poking out. All around. I got a nice bead all the way around, not too much, but just enough. That tells me it's sealed good. So, that, guys, is going to be it for tonight. Ooh, I almost hit my head, trailer hitch. That's done that twice already. Got a uh, Bearings, axles, studs, all in. Um, everybody seems to be pretty happy. And we'll get some oil in it tomorrow. After that seats, uh, seals up, I'm going to go ahead and shut the ignition off because I have it in neutral for ease of working on stuff. And yeah. We'll assemble some brakes tomorrow and put some roll oil in it and call it a day. All right, it's the next day. Our um, all of our stuff I'll be over here to be a better picture. All of our uh, sealant is hardened up. It's good, sealed up. Now it's time to put new fluid in. Um, specs call for about two and a half quarts. You usually fill it just to below, just to below the fill line. Ranger forms are saying two and a half quarts. Um, so, anyway, one thing that's very helpful <laughs> is a lift so you can stand under here. But also, um, this little tool, I think I got it from Harbor Freight. It may have been from AutoZone. But it's dual threaded, so it goes on goes on big, big jugs. Jugs with big mouths and jugs with little mouths. So it's, and then you just pump this stuff in. Makes it a lot easier than trying to hold the bottle up above and, you know, all that. Anyway, here we go. Well, there she is. Two and a half quarts in this. Put a little sealer on the, on the plug just so it wouldn't leak. New brake pads and all assembled. Everything's tight. I'm going to have to bleed the brakes because I had to replace this brake cylinder over here. It did get uh, a little hot due to the rubbing. You can see that, um, just a second here. See that guy right there? So, he was a $20 part. I could have just rebuilt it, but it's like, you wouldn't hone it out and put new seals on it. It's like you spent $20 of the time, so. Anyway, we'll uh, put the wheels on, set her on the ground, and bleed the brakes. Alrighty, with the rear end done, um, next thing is replace this tie rod end. She's a little janky, so we're going to replace it. And the important thing is to make sure that this distance from here to the to the uh, steering rack stays the same. So we're going to count the turns as we take it off to make sure we have it uh, in the same spot. And another way you can do it is back this guy. Excuse me, back this guy up just a little bit put it on and then you'll be within a quarter turn and you'll know either this thing's down or up or over. So anyway, I'm going to start on that by taking this guy out, needle those pliers, and get this guy off, pop it off, and we'll loosen that. All right. I wanted to show you this. So they call this, this is factory. There's a spot up there, but it actually doesn't have a Zert fitting in it. They're not made with Zert fittings. They're non-serviceable items. So you can get this exact replacement, or you can get this guy, which is um, got a Zert fitting on top, and it's got a different kind of boot. It's, gre it's greasable, and they call this the heavy duty version. I don't know why, but anyway, it's a different length. Well, it looks like it's pretty close. So we're gonna go with it and and um, see how it goes down the road. If not, I'll have to go get an alignment or maybe make some adjustment. It's just an old work truck, so. We're not too critical with it. Okay, so um, the new one came with a new bolt or nut, I mean. But let's see if I can show you. It's um, not as tall, and so the excuse me, the um, cotter key would not capture the king slots in the king nut or the castle nut, whatever you want to call it. So I went with the old nut so that I could capture it, be safe. 
The other thing I want to show you is I spun this on, it lines in, and watch how much this turns. It's like a third of a turn, which is about what we did. So it should be pretty damn close. Um, we'll see. Also, this is got lots of grease in it, so uh, we're good to go. I'm going to tighten this guy up right here, put my tire back on, torque my wheels, and take her for a test drive, I think. Well, we took her for a ride. She's all good. Nothing's hot. Nothing makes noise. Super happy with my old girl. And 300, I said 364, it's 362,000 miles on it. Now she's got a new rear end. Anyway, there's that. On to the next one.